we have to present a webinar on power train control for the hybrid electric vehicles so just a quick introduction about myself i did my masters from iit delhi and after that i have 7 years of experience in electric the electric vehicle so since last 7 years i have been working for the electric type in control unit and the uh, module development all right so now we move to the content uh, in this webinar i will cover uh, these following topics the first we will start with the introduction of the hybrid electric vehicles then we will try to understand okay what are the different uh, what is the role of the powertrain and what are the main components uh, when we convert a conventional powertrain into the hybrid electric powertrain then we will see the different architecture of the hybrid powertrain then we will classify the powertrain based on the energy flow and we'll see the hybrid vehicles the different types of hybrid vehicles and their features and at the end we'll go quickly through the power train control for hgv here is the first point so first of all we should understand what is hybrid electric vehicle means so basically it uh, it use uh, two different type of uh, power train and we here we combine the electric engine and the conventional ice so it has the two different power train and if you see the benefits or the purpose of the hybrid the hgv then uh, the target is to improve the performance in terms of torque and the power and uh, at the same time we want to improve the fuel economy so we uh, the target is to improve the fuel economy by doing the regeneration uh, and the running the engine at the most efficient point then obviously when we are improving the fuel economy so we will uh, reduce the emission so yeah we are moving uh, moving away towards the cleaner mode of the transportation but uh, it's not we can say it's a clean mode of transportation but not we can say it's a very environment friendly because it all depends from where we are getting the electrical energy so uh, when we are seeing that okay when we are changing our conventional power train into the when we are doing the high electrification we are getting benefits like a fuel economy low emission better performance then everybody can think why can't we go to the complete electric vehicle so there are few things for which we want the hybrid electric vehicles because those are the some some of the issues with the electric vehicle like the uh, lesser energy uh, like uh, in the ev you have the higher refueling time so like uh, once your battery is uh, discharged completely ev if you go for the charging of the battery it takes roughly around 1 hour 2 hour for the fast charging and that for slow charging it it goes up to 6 6 to 7 hours so that is one of the issue with the ev which we can overcome with the hybrid electric vehicle and in the ev limitations comes the with the battery technology also like unlike uh, with the fuel tank you can uh, just for example in a car you can cover almost 400 500 kilometers but uh, with with the typical ev you can cover the typical range can be 150 200 maximum 300 kilometers so those are the some of the benefits of the h hybrid vehicle over the ev we'll move to the power train so first of all we should understand what is the role of the power train so basically the main important role of the power train is to generate the power and to deliver it to the road surface so when we are talking the generating power means here we are actually the idea is to convert the energy from one from one so uh, from source uh, like a source can be any medium like uh, fuel in terms of the charge of the battery so to convert the energy into the kinetic energy so that it can drive the vehicle and uh, if i see the essential components which is required for the electrification so the first and the very most important thing is the power unit it can be the power unit is a, basically it can be fuel cell con conventional ic or the turbine engines then the second important thing is energy storage so the storage can be the battery flywheel systems and when we talk about the electrification the important propulsion unit we can say it's the electric motors and now we'll see the challenges so some of the challenges that we face with the hgv yeah the first is the increased complexity so because we are adding some more components in terms of the battery motors then inverter so packaging and weight is a big issue with the hybrid vehicles and the second is the pricing 
because of the cost of the electrification add up adds up to the cost of the vehicle so effectively the price of the vehicle goes higher now we will go through the different architecture power trend architecture so like uh, what do you mean by the architecture the architecture is like when we do the electrification and when we convert our conventional vehicle into hybrid electric vehicles so the architecture defines in the in the way like where we actually connect our electrical machine so it all depends on the position of the electrical machines and the type of the connection how are we connecting the machine in, into the existing powertrain either through belt integrated or with some gear box so uh, if we see in terms of the position of the electrical machine then the power powertrain architecture can be categorized into five uh, it starts from p0 to p4 so if in the right side if you see the diagram so like uh, in the diagram if you see the uh, front side of the vehicle from there it starts actually so initial stage or the first architecture you can say it's a p0 then as we move towards the actual the drive axle we upgrade our architecture from p0 to p1 then p2 then p3 then p4 like that it goes so we'll see each architecture one by one so the first starts uh, first we'll start with the p0 it's a very basic actually uh, we also say this as a belt starter generator architecture and here what what we do is to connect, we connect the electrical machine with the engine through a belt so that's why it is called the belt belt starter belt starter generator architecture the advantage is the low cost integration we don't need to make any changes in the existing powertrain we can uh, just with some effort we can uh, add the motor add the motor to the engine with the help of the belt so that is the biggest advantage but yeah there are limitations of this architecture that uh, torque will be limited because of the limitations of the belt then also the recuperation will be limited because of the en engine losses and yeah because we are using the belt so there is a durability issue so if we have so much limitations with this p0 but uh, it's a good to start with this architecture next is the p1 which is often called as a crankshaft mounted electric vehicle so what we do here actually motors are connected directly to the crankshaft just after the engine so here now the machines can work as a generator during the vehicle deceleration and also as an engine starter and the motor can assist the engine during the acceleration so the advantage is of course we gain higher efficiency and uh, also we can remove the 12 volt starter because uh, here uh, to assist more torque and to to gain the ben more benefit of the gen uh, recuperation we increase the size of the machine and also the battery so we can eliminate the 12 volt starter but of course if we compare with the further stages then uh, still we have the limitations of the torque because of the machine size and uh, also since it is directly coupled to the engine so whenever you we go for the recuperation there will be friction uh, engine friction losses and impact is the like unlike p0 here we need to do some changes in the architecture so of course it will impact on the vehicle cost then the next is the p2 configuration this is like uh, we are move uh, so now when we started from p0 the amount of the electrification or the part of the elect electrification was very less now slowly we are we are moving to the stronger side of the electrification where the the motors are taking uh, are taking part pa actively uh, participating in the drives recuperation so basically controlling the torque so when we see the p2 configuration here what happens that the machines are attached between the ic and the transmission just after the clutch it can be attached through a belt and uh, the advantage is like here we can go here we achieve the uh, higher amount of recuperation because during the braking uh, we can completely disconnect the electrical machine with the ic and uh, so uh, with the help of clutch so definitely we can go we can gain more amount of recuperation energy 
and additional some additional hybrid function we can add here like coasting braking like when you release your ack pedal the the vehicle coast down so here again we with the help of this internal clutch we can remove we can isolate the engine so that all the recuperation energy is directly fed to the battery and yeah uh, it it will also help the vehicle like in for the creep and drive again the disadvantage will be the because of the integration the vehicle cost will be higher then the next is the p3 configuration so in p3 configuration the electrical machine like we are moving now as we are moving ahead we are shifting the electric electrical machine towards the uh, active axle so what we are doing now here actually we are moving the electrical machine towards the on the output shaft of the transmission side so the advantage is like compared to the p2 here again we will gain the higher recuperation energy because uh, there will be no losses because of the transmission we are directly gaining the recuperation and we can go for the full electric drive mode with the complete torque support the next is the p4 configuration so the p4 configuration it can have a different variants like uh, one way you can uh, attach the electrical machine same as the p3 configuration the other way you can attach the i, I mean we can attach the machine directly on the axle the drive axle also we can attach the electrical machine directly on the wheels so there are, there can be three different configuration under p4 the the it has the advantage that the biggest advantage that we can achieve the four wheel drive capability with the help of p4 configuration to do so what we can do like uh, we can uh, one of the excel can be independently driven by the engine the second excel can be driven by electrical machine and of course here we will have the maximum efficiency for the electrification